Welcome to this third session of um, our River Seven Source to Sea. And we have already done Shrewsbury Iron Bridge. Where do we go? Bridge North, um, kindly hosted by Stan, a regular on Zumago, and then Bewdley. And today we leave Bewdley and we head on to Sourport. And this is the nearest T-shirt colour I have to Sourport colours. And also Worcester, where I really think I coxed the Marlow crew an eight to victory in about the 1990s or 1989. So I'll see what I can remember of that. First of all, we're going to do just three or four minutes of stretching. And since we've got Sophie on, I'm going to do all my stretching sat today. Um, just to have a bit of empathy here. So, uh, but by all means, do them standing. It's just like what we would do um, when we'd meet by the river. So I'm just gonna shrug my shoulders, rotate five times back. Uh, of course, if you wanna do them standing, that's absolutely fine. Ooh, a bit crunchy and five times the other way, just to help mobilize my upper body. Personally, my upper body is the thing that gets most stiff. <clears throat> and now I'm gonna put my thumbs on my shoulders and that just opens up the arm a bit more and drawing big circles with my elbows, five times one way, oh, five times the other. <clears throat> and now if you're not gonna hit anything, just reach up to the ceiling, really stretch out and round and back. Feel those shoulder blades squeeze between you, really out, squeeze behind you. And as you come forward, really stretch forward <clears throat> five times. And now I'm just going to rotate so you can see, but some people do this cat cow in Pilates, but I'm just going to um, reach forward, really reach forward, over stretch, try and stretch those muscles between your shoulder blades. If you want to hold your elbows, and feel how mobile your back is. Mine are very stiff, probably through computer stuff or digging in the garden or erging without stretching afterwards and relax. And now I'm just gonna go the opposite way. So move your shoulders back, try and squeeze those shoulders. And with the finished position, what we're trying to do is have our, our elbows come back. So try and squeeze those back squeeze those back and if you're in this in a on all fours it's this cat cow stretch so really stretch so I can feel those muscles connecting my shoulder blades and we'll do one more forwards really try and open out and if you can at the end really try and do some of these stretching so that's stretching my muscles between my shoulder blades out and relax and back. And now I'm just going to twist around. So probably still a bit stiff. Just going to have my elbows level, hands over me, and just twist. Let the left elbow lead you round. Trying sitting up, strong core. And the right, sitting up, strong core. And this time I'm going to open up my arm, trying to really stretch back little presses. Just try and remember how stiff you feel. And the other way. Okay, right, I'm just going to get on the ergo now, just aware of time. <clears throat> See if I can get that right. Okay, see if I can remember to cut me off a bit. So see if I've got this programmed in. Right, this one. So we're going to start off with 10 minutes, just gentle paddle, working up the slide. I'm going to do mine with feet out. So Di, I'm going to take my time check from you. And for those that are new, this is Di, who's our wonderful online cop. 15 coach. seconds. So I'm going to start from back stops, elbows back, 
for Flat. three, two, one, row. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with back stops, nice flat wrists, relaxed fingers. <clears throat> Do about a minute of this, just to really get this back stops position set before I work up the slide. So my working from my fingers, fingers nice and relaxed, no white knuckles, flat wrists, just hooking the blade around, not gripping it at all. Completely up to you whether you want your thumbs above or below, but they should be absolutely relaxed and flat wrists and use those elbows to squeeze back. We're not really worried about the pressure here, just getting that movement, that muscle memory. And sitting up, making sure we've engaged our core <clears throat> Starting to rock over in three, two, one, go. So letting the hands lead the body over. Starting to feel your body waking up. So this is the basis of the rowing stroke. And for those of the people that can't use their legs, really their whole rowing stroke. And it's really important to engage your core here. So sitting up, engaging those core muscles. Rocking over from the hips, letting the hands lead the body over. And if you're having hamstring pinches at this point, you might want to set your feet slightly higher. So I'm gonna start bending the knees now, just naturally letting the knees break. I'm not really worried how far, just starting to let them break if you can, and feeling that connection with the foot plate. Again, connection between the hands, the shoulders squeezing and those finishes, elbows moving behind you. And connecting the work from the feet through the core. And if you feel that is connected now, you can start to build a little bit more slide. And all we're doing is giving one more second on the recovery. That's three minutes. And now at about what I would say, it's quarter slide. So I'm really connecting with my feet. And what I'm gonna do, just because we want to try and get the ratings up a little bit, I'm just gonna do 10 at half, half three quarter pressure at quarter slide. Ready, go. So I'm just going to try and connect sharper but smoothly. Relaxing my arms, just hanging off that patch and relax. So, like that quarter slide, that higher rating really makes me realize how sharp I need to be at the finish, but also quick and sharp at the patch. Now I'm just gonna let my knees bend a little bit more on the recovery. Again, relaxed hands, flat wrists. And now I'm just gonna let myself float just gradually <clears throat> all the way up to sort of what I think is a comfortable full slide, but I really want you to make sure that you keep your technique. So don't worry about length, just get to what you think is a, your full slide. And we're just gonna sit paddling here as Di takes us down the river. And at the last two minutes, we're gonna do a few bursts. Nice, so 
settle your rhythm. Okay, and you're halfway through your warm up. And for those of you who this is your week three of the River Seven Source to See, you'll have heard this bit once or twice before. So the River Seven is the longest British river at 224 miles or 360 kilometers. It rises in mid Wales in the Cambrian mountains and follows a semicircular route southwards to Bristol Channel and the Atlantic Ocean. <coughs> It grows as it flows from a trickle to a two mile wide estuary out at Bristol. Week one was the source to Shrewsbury and Ironbridge. Week two was Ironbridge and Bridge North to Bewdley. And then this week we're leaving Bewdley, going to Stourport and then on to Worcester. Still in the West Midlands region, <clears throat> the West Midlands is famous for its two day regattas, summer regattas. So um, Shrewsbury, Ironbridge, Bewdley and Stourport, all two day regattas. Bridge North is so good they get it over and done within one day. Mm. And Worcester has four, uh, two regattas, so they, they, they are each of one day. The weather in the region today, rain become heavy later but 10 miles an hour of a southerly wind. And you're coming up on seven minutes, so you've got your three minutes of work left to go. Okay. So I'm gonna do, start to build a, the ratings up if you want to, completely up to you. But I'll share how I used to do it in a single. So I'm going to go to three quarter slide. And I'm going to build the rating. I have got my feet out, so that'll help me bend the hands. So I'm going to build my rating on two fives, five, five build and five winds. So building the rating and then winding it up. Ready. Go to see how far you go. One, two, three, four, five. That's so three quarter slide. Now I'm going to build the length up a little bit. Relax it out. So what I tend to do is that build, go to three quarter slide, sitting up. If the boat's not going so fast in the mind, the boat's not going so fast, it's quite heavy. I don't want to strain my back. And then after that five build, I've got boat speed. I'm going to wind it up. I'm going to do that again. But add on another five. And we're not going crazy here. We're just trying to get the boat speed up in our minds. Okay. Three fives. In two. In one. Okay, so sitting up for me. That three quarter slide, sitting up, spinning the hands, really making sure I'm connecting with the foot plate. And now I'm lengthening out, building the pressure and the length. And now I'm trying to lengthen out my steady state. So think about your, seconds. what you want to do for your first piece which is just going to be a sort of three-quarter paddle. So I find, okay, paddle it out. 15. I'm definitely going to do better once I put my shoes on and feet in. 
five, four, three, two, one, and rest. Okay. So you're on a three minute rest now. Time for you to put your shoes on, put your feet in, get a drink, open the windows, take Good your shots. <laughs> Yeah, it's five and three rests, isn't it? That's right, four times five and three rests. So this first piece, we're not, I'm not gonna do a racing start. I'm gonna do a sort of a 22, 23 at the first minute and then settle to 20. And I'm really just gonna listen and get, put my inserts in the wrong feet. That's not good, is it? <laughs> There you go, that's me sorting myself out the night before, but in the wrong way. <laughs> I used to have just uh, I used to have knee problems, so I managed to get some inserts, which are really amazing, but it does help if you put them in the right feet. So this first five minute piece, oh, sorry, yeah, five minute piece, Di's gonna familiarize us with the course, get ourselves in the right frame of mind, and then the second five minute piece after a three minute rest, we're gonna do a sort of more racing piece. And I've got my little flags here to get us into the spirit of things. There we go. It's like, that's the equivalent of putting your blades in the wrong side of the boat, isn't it? Um, I bet there was some of that at the ball cup, wasn't there? There probably was. Oh, it was so lovely to see these young, young people racing a lot for the first time. Such a and great weather, relatively great weather. So we had a few cap sizes, but I think they're all either kids got back in the boat and wanted to race. Um, One more minute. So yeah, they're really good. Okay. So think to yourself what you want to get out of this piece. For me, um, it's about just getting my body going, making sure it's fully warmed up for when I do my more intense piece. I'm just getting my mind in the right frame of mind and my body warmed up properly. So think of strong core, making sure you're sat on the front of your bum so you can get that body rock nice straight back. What we don't want to do is this, so nice straight back. And if you want to just feel the back of your spine just to make sure it's seconds. straight. Are you ready? Row. Okay. So I'm just going to set up to about 22. About 22. Fab. So in this first five minutes, we're traveling down to Starport and then a little bit of introduction um, to Starport, the town. So we leave in Budley where we stayed overnight in a safari lodge at West Midland <laughs> Safari Park. Um, they're lodges with viewing areas over the enclosures. And we choose between red panda, elephant, cheetah, giraffe, rhino and tiger. Marvellous. Elephant. So whatever else you had. <clears throat> Over to you. We've rode past Budley Town Football Club, that most famous of football clubs. And all of a sudden, we're at Starport. As we're going down river, Starport Boat Club is on our bow side and Starport Town and the basins are on our stroke side. But it really is just a hop, skip and a jump over the bridge into town from the boat club. Starport Town developed around the canal basins. Um, it's the terminus of the Staffordshire and Worcestershire Canal, um, 1768, and, in, and the Birmingham Canal in 1772. And it's where those canals meet the seven. <laughs> 
interestingly, and I think you've worked out by now, I've got a bit of a thing about where towns get their names from. Originally, Starport was called Stourmouth. Then it was called Newport. And then the name was changed to Starport in 1771. Starport basins, the canal basins, are now advertised as a maritime day out. Well, it took us about an hour. <laughs> <laughs> it's all relative, it though. It's all relative. Yeah, absolutely. So you're halfway through this first race. And there is a large fun fair there, fun park, that's there all year round. Starport Boat Club was founded in 1876. Now a two-storey building with a busy function room on the first floor. And it's a bit of a social centre for Starport Town. Stalwarts of the club, Mary by the way, and um, anyone who's racing at master's level will know Mr. Gwilliam. as well as their regatta and their head race. They also hosted earlier this year, Wire Forest School Sports Partnership Indoor Rowing Challenge. And that links in nicely with the earlier session this week on Leeds and the previous stuff we've done about um, London youth rowing, Warrington youth rowing. and the work that Hannah does out at Dorney. We're coming to the last minute. In this last minute, if you want to get your heart rate up, maybe take it up a bit or two. <clears throat> so a minute to go. The first Starport Regatta was held in 18... <clears throat> excuse me, in 1876. And that was over one and a quarter miles. And you'll be thrilled to know that the umpire was on horseback. <laughs> 30 seconds. It's now a two day regatta, commonly with 600 crews and around 3000 spectators, including the, the competitors. Amazing. 15 seconds. Five. And rest. Okay, I'm just going to puddle this out for 20 seconds. And then do a little stretch. And then I think we'll pair up. We're imagining now we're in the race on a river and we'll pair up with our opposition. So I'll call us the Mergos and the Oppo will be Starport. And then, uh, and I think it's a free start, what are they call free start. It so is, yeah, free start, 110, no, 1,100 meters downstream. Great. <clears throat> 110 metres would have been my kind of race. <laughs> so normally at these river regattas, you pair up. Um, there's normally some boys by to demark a navigation lane or a, a warm-up lane. Uh, sometimes rivers have to be shut off with the permission of the local environment agency. Um, <clears throat> So really, it's a special day for lots of people to really enjoy the river. Um, and it's always worth knowing your river, knowing that bit of stretch of water, where the odd branch comes out, where the shallows are. Okay, halfway through our rest. So we're, we're paired up and we're in sight of the marshal. And what the, they would then hand over to the aligner will pick the crews up and get them to drift down and maybe one crew to paddle on a little bit. 
and then the aligner will put their aligner's flag out and then there'll be somebody else. So this is their white little flag. And then somebody else uh, called the starter would say, uh, name the cruise and, and announce the race. But that would have probably been before that because it's a bit tricky to get aligned. So, so last quick checks. Think about how you're going to set off. I'm going to try and set off about 26, <clears throat> build up to 26 and then settle at 24. Okay, this is race one of Stourport. Got my liners flag out. I have to drop that. A liners flag. Race one of Stourport between Zoom Ergos and Stourport. We're a Cox nine today. Marvellous. Okay. It's a semi-final, so we've got to win this. Excellent. Against the home crew. Attention. Go. Fill with those legs sitting up. Taking a quick check behind me that I've got a good line. I'm not going into the reeds or the bank or the other crew. And now I'm going to lengthen out. Good, strong core. That's great. Getting ready for our first push together. Just a quick look around, in two, in one, let's push back into our race pace, nice and long, good rhythm everyone, great rhythm. Feel that connection between the foot plate and the, and the back, strong back, loose arms, hang off the catch. Great rhythm. Just sort of breathing cool now. Sitting up, getting that air into the lungs. Pushing together at three minutes, in three. Ready, push together, feel that rhythm, nice and long. Well done, that's great, lifting off. So two brooks have joined the main river on bow side. And we've got fields on both sides with the seven way on stroke side, the footpath. So all kinds of tourists stopping to look and point and take our photographs. The river's fairly straight. There's been a small bend to stroke side, a kink back to bow side, another kink to stroke side. We're over halfway. Get ready for another rhythm push. Ready. Go. Let the slide run. Get that length on the recovery. Feel that connection at the catch. Elbow squeezing at the finish. Using those engaged laps. Using that muscle between the shoulders. Okay, everyone. Okay, we're level with the other crew, and we're going to do a sneaky push in three, 
in two, in one. Let's lift together. So as we've lifted, we've gone past the first fun park on stroke side. We can see the bridge. There's crowds on the bridge cheering you on. Okay, let's take that shout. Lift it up, two pits. Go. Take it past the boat club on bow side. So we're into the crowds, the boating on cruise. We can smell the barbecue. And the finished scaffolding tower is at the end of the club lawn. Okay, last few strokes, let's push off. Sneak ahead. 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, and rest. Okay, first minute, I think I'm gonna just paddle it out. Well done, everyone. Really good. Very close finish. At these river regattas, we don't have photo finish. So the finished judges are consulting, but I reckon we that last little push just took our bows ahead. So get my flag. So the coordinating umpire says yes, yeah, race clear. So we're through to the next race. So if you need a drink, take a drink. And do a little stretch. I'll just do one or two little stretches in a few seconds. Hmm. That's a good one, everyone. Well done. Hopefully that helps you for that first race. So whether you're just joining us for the first time or this is a regular, use this time as a bit of a rest. So I'm just going to do a couple of stretches. So I'm going to reach up and right hand over my left elbow, just stretching that tricep out. So there, how did that feel for you? And what do you need to work on in the warm up for the next piece? So for me, I, I need to sort of just try and get my rating up a little bit. Um, but I felt, I really felt the rhythm cause and uh, everybody with me, that really helped. I just need to make sure I get the nice rhythm, keep that rhythm and not let it fade away into a rush. Okay, and the other one, so. Two minutes. Right hand down the back. And as Judith so was, was just that. saying about getting the rating up, what she doesn't mean is rushing up the slide to take the next catch. What she means is putting more power down in the stroke to bring yeah. the splits down that way rather than running up and down like a blue bottom fly. Blue bottom fly. Yeah, and, and um, I joined Lewis Atrell's one on uh, Saturday occasionally, and he has a great way of saying it, of, of pressing on the feet, just pressing on the feet to get that extra connection, that extra speed, that extra work that momentum so i think maybe that's what we should try this 15 seconds next one right. okay we're just going to paddle this out so think of what rating you want to do three quarter half pressure i'm going to do about 22 i think 2022 and row okay. so this is our third five minute piece And this is, again, the more relaxed of the pieces if you're um, following Judith's pattern so that you've saved a bit of juice for race four, which is your big one. <laughs> and in this piece, we're leaving Stourport. We've gone past the fields for Stourport Football Club the cricket and rugby club 
where they host the overnight camping. There's usually a very good party at Starport on the Saturday night. So my husband just told me this morning, <laughs> I think he did that circuit before we got married, so. There you go. <laughs> I think you should find out about each other even after 25 years. <laughs> We're running the 11 miles from Starport to Worcester. And over those 11 miles, we go through 11 fords. And the seven way, the footpath is following us along the bank. We're rowing past the redstone caves, they're sandstone cliffs going down to the river. Caves carved out in the 12th century and home to an hermitage where once 500 men lived. Wow. We've rowed past Starport Marina on Strokeside and, as you know, I'm a bit into this, the Aston Manor Cider Mill. Lovely. <laughs> We're following the river's main leg around the island, and there's a cut there to Lincoln Lock. And we're rowing past Larford Lakes, which is a commercial fishery. And you're two and a half minutes in. So practice this squeeze on the feet. Sorry, guy. No, no, just what I was gonna say, this is your relaxed piece. So this is where you're thinking about your technique, thinking about sitting up tall with your shoulders away from your ears and your bottom underneath you. So a nice straight line from the back of your head down to your bum. So when you rock over, you're rocking from your hips, same as you did in the warm up, rather than hunching your shoulders. We're going past, <clears throat> excuse me, good grief. We're going past the artist Robin Holder's exhibition, which is of the River Severn Source to Sea. We've gone past the Lenchford Inn Hotel and the Sky Tent Treetop Glamping. Four minutes gone. <laughs> We've gone past Holt Teeth, Fish Pass and Lock. We've got a few more bends, Bevere Island, The Slip and into Worcester City. <clears throat> I'm just taking the rating up just a bit. Just sharpening myself up. Last 15 seconds. And rest. Okay, right, drink of water, check your bits and pieces. <clears throat> Remember, if you're, if you're um, getting a twinge in your hamstrings, then maybe lift your feet up one notch. Might be just too low. And just a tip on the knees, as we go faster rating, it's very easy to over compress. So what I mean by that is to, 
let the momentum sort of take you out of control, over compress, so that your knees are a more acute angle than 90 degrees. And the thing is, it's A, it's not good for the knees, and B, it's not particularly a strong position. Now, you may see some super duper athletes do that, but personally, I'm not a super duper athlete, so I want to look after my knees. So I tend to prefer to sit up, get a sort of a 90 degrees leg drive, and then um, even if I might be a bit shorter, at least I can take my knees and get a good leg drive. So, and I help myself by getting a good rhythm and a rock over from the catch, from the, from the finish. So just be mindful if you're one of these people that think, oh, I must get lots of length, get the length from the body rock and the arms. And all of that length, frankly, comes from backstops so that when you're there, strong catch position, and your leg drive down. Great, quick drink of water. So this is our last work piece of this session. Um, we don't have a lot of time to stretch afterwards, but please do either have a shower and then stretch or stretch straight away on your own. Um, I'll just do one or two little stretches, but after you've been doing these intense pieces, try and do a little bit more stretching and a bit of a plug for natural physio, Lucy Hart, natural physio on YouTube. Some of her sessions are great. Just help me think, okay, who do I need to follow? Meantime, we're paired up with our opposition at the start of Worcester Regatta. And I'll try and remember when I coxed the Marlow 8 to victory by a canvas. Gosh, that was so exciting. I can still remember that. Okay. So today in. we're racing Pullinger Boat Club. And they're Pullinger. The friends of RGS Worcester. Great, Pullinger. Okay. So race four, this is Worcester, Pullinger, Zumergos, aligned. Attention, go. Okay, lifting up, connecting and drive. So the Worcester course follows the length of the Worcester race course, the horse racing course. We're starting at Dog and Duck, which used to be a, an old waterman's inn at the top of the race course. We're going to row down through the race course, past the rowing club, to Sabrina Bridge, which is a footbridge which opened in 1992. There are five boat clubs in Worcester. There's Worcester Rowing Club, King School Worcester, Royal Grammar School Worcester, Worcester University, and the Pullinger Boat Club, which are our opposition, which are the parents and friends of RGS Worcester. And they used to have a blind school rowing club as well. Really? All right, and now second is my race pace. <clears throat> we do a rhythm call. Breathing, get that rhythm, go. So the horse racing course is on stroke side. The River Seven floods quite regularly, as we've heard already. And rowers are now banned from rowing on the race course during the floods. Getting all our body lean from back stops. Using that time to breathe. Nice. Nice rhythm. Two minutes from. Worcester Rowing Club back. was formed in 1874 from 12 clubs mainly artisanal and trade-based clubs. It now hosts two regattas and two head races each year, subject to flooding. And their 2022 spring regatta is on the 21st of May. Yeah. It's an 850 meters regatta.
It's a fairly straight course. There's a small kink on stroke side just to catch the steers person out. Okay, let's press on the feet. Get a little bit more work. That's taking me down two pits. Connecting that core. Good rhythm. Good work. Let's do a little squeeze push. Ready. Go. Just connect and squeeze. Bending that boat away. Seeing our puddles move away to the distance. Coming up to one minute. I'm just going to do three little pushes. Ready. On the feet. Squeeze. A minute to go. When we finish racing, we're going on a, a crew tour to the cathedral. Building started there in 1084. We also might go to the Timber Frame Tudor House Museum for life in Tudor and 17th century Worcester. The Battle of Worcester is rumoured to be where Cromwell made a pact with the devil. And on that note, let's push for home. <laughs> Squeezing off. Great rhythm, everyone. <laughs> but all you've got. Ten more seconds. Lifting away. Five, four, three, two, one, and rest. Okay. We'll wind it down. Wind it down. Should do one minute paddling this out. So we've Not gone through the... Sabrina Bridge, uh, which was the finish line, and we've pushed on past the railway bridge. Below the railway bridge, which has 65 arches, we've got RGS Worcester's Boathouse, then the road bridge, the River Bends, and below the Bends is King School Worcester Boathouse, and its beautiful new building opened in 2012, built with part funding from a 2.5 million donation wow. from a past pupil, Michael Baker. Right, amazing, isn't it? Makes you realise how people really value their own, put their money where their mouth is, where they feel it's going to add value for the generations to come. Quite. Okay, just going to do another 30 seconds on the ergo. Uh, in the meantime, the umpire or coordinating umpire, if it's a bank umpire, has said the white flag. And Di, what do, what do you reckon as our finished judge? Did we win by... A third of a length, quarter of a length, something like that. Well, certainly by the bow seat. Okay, I'll take that. <clears throat> so next week, everybody, we are in Peterborough supporting Kate. If you remember, Kate is doing uh, the big row in Peterborough this weekend, this Saturday. All are welcome if you want to go along and watch or join in. I know Sophie's going. I was hoping to go, but we're, we're planning to move house. We're moving stuff into a container instead. And that's oh. Kate's 12 hour row. Amazing. She's doing a minute, uh, a minute, an hour on the erg, two hours in a boat, four times. Is Kate still on, I wonder? I'm still here. <laughs> if you, do you want to, do you want to, well, I'm just doing some stretching. So I'm just gonna do two stretches. One, I'm gonna stretch my back for those that you are seated. Um, and then one opening the glutes. But while we're doing that, do you want, how are you doing? How are you pretty much ready for this, Kate? I don't know about I don't know about ready, but it's going to happen. Great, <laughs> it's going to happen. Well, regardless, it's going to happen. Yes, yes. And um, remind I think, us. I think, I think once I get past the, the six hours, sorry, I'm going to 
that that's been that's halfway yeah, yes. and that's, that's, that, but that's all I've done so far. So um, the, the next six hours will be the telling time, shall we say? Well, but I've been told. But I've been told that I can't drink pims and lemonade. And not until while they're <laughs> Not until the. So just for everybody else, um, Kate is doing a twelve-hour row at Peaceful yes. Rowing Club. She's a blind sculler, um, so it's no yeah. mean feat. Um, starting at eight o'clock. Finish in the morning, right. finishing at eight o'clock at night. So I'm going to be hoping yeah. you've got great weather. And it's going to be bri- it's going to be brilliant. It's a brilliant forecast. We couldn't have asked for anything better. Um, everybody's welcome. It's a gorgeous walk around the lake, as um, certainly Di will know. Um, it's um, we've got a cake store, we've got barbecue bar, Pim's tent. Um, they've even they're even putting up the marquee for me. Oh, brilliant! And I'll, and I'll be the and I'll be the one with balloons everywhere on my boat and on my um, PM five. Fantastic! Um, when I'm on the water, I'll be wearing a silly hat as well. Oh, brilliant! So, Fantastic! Um, so no, I, nobody's going to be able to miss me. And you why are you doing this, Kate? Okay. Um, well, I'm doing it because we've spent so long on these rowing machines over the last two years, and I needed some focus for all of these thousands millions of meters that we're all doing yes um so i needed a focus like we all do and i don't want to race so this was it yes. um, and it's a good chance to promote rowing as being um, accessible to everybody of all ages whether you're blind disabled 70 you know 80. whatever age whatever yes um so it's to promote that get it out and me being blind it does seem to attract attention um, Fantastic, and also to raise funds so for charitable projects um i was thinking the other day that um, maybe in peter we could also try to s- set something up similar to the one that we um put some money towards from the love rowing yes um, yes so like a coffee and cake and to get people with them um, down to just try something out fantastic well, mm-hmm. uh, I really wish you all the best. I will be thinking of you. I shall be at Tempstead and Regatta. I will definitely tweet you. And um, uh, and just to say, you are going to be our main feature for this time next week. <laughs> and um, obviously, Peter is a multi-lane course, but next to a river. So um, so definitely, it'd be really good to see how it goes. And I think a lot, a lot of people have said, well, it, it, the challenge is great, but I can't see beyond the challenge. So rather than you falling off the cliff, the mental cliff, uh, you've got to focus. This, ne- this time next week is the big goal, really, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, thank okay. you for that. No, thank you all for your support and encouragement. This is, it's, it's, you know, okay. it's going to take me through. <laughs>